Doors keep slamming in my house. I'm hearing footsteps at night. Bibles are being hidden or moved around the house. I see dark figures walking around. These are all things I've heard. And today we're going to talk about how to get demons that cause disturbances out of your house. Now, these are called what most people call them poltergeists, which are simply demons that cause disturbances. Polter is a German word meaning noisy and geist just means spirit. These are just noisy demons and these are how people would refer to them. It's a real thing, guys, and this is what I want to get into. I want to talk about them. How did they get there? And I want to talk about how to get rid of them. Before we do that, please, guys, do me a massive favor. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below. Have you ever had a demon in your home? Have you gotten rid of demon in your homes? Have you experienced walking, moving, shaking, your bed rattling, demon figures? Have you experienced this? I want to know. I like to read through the comments. I read through all the comments. So let me know down below all about what you've experienced when it comes to this. Now, can demons dwell in houses or areas? Yes, an evil spirit can live in any place where it is welcomed or where it could assume authority and not be hindered. Remember, Revelation 2.13 is the letter to the church and it says, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. This was a physical dwelling place of Satan. Satan and demons can absolutely live in physical dwelling places, contrary to popular belief. So this works the same as it works when it comes to people. They have to have a legal right to be there. Let me make this very clear. A demon cannot be dwelling or living in your house if it has no legal right to be there. So if you're dealing with a demon in your house, if you're dealing with a demon in your garage or wherever it is that you're dealing with, it's there because somebody let it be there. It could be from the person that lived there before you or it could be an open door and we're going to identify some of these things that you have. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 26, do not give any place to the devil. Paul is specifically talking about anger, but this could apply to any area of your life. We cannot give place to demons or to the devil uh, anywhere in our life. We need to make sure that we're living demon proof. Do not give him real estate in your mind. Don't give the devil any place in your emotions. Don't give the devil any place in your relationships. Don't give the devil any place in your body and especially in your home. According to Jesus, we are spiritual houses. Luke eleven twenty four. 24. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert looking for rest. But when it finds none, it says, I'll return to the house I left. So notice the demon leaves because of an unlocked door. We've already talked about that. I'll link it down below about demon portals. But remember, demons call them, call us their house. And so demons can live inside of us, which we are spiritual houses, but they can also dwell and live inside of physical houses. So you need to understand that. Demons can live in physical houses. Not only are demons seeking to enter your spiritual house, but they're seeking to enter your physical house. Now, why, Isaiah, would a demon want to enter my physical house? What benefit would it gain? Demons oftentimes enter physical houses to cause fear, anxiety, stress, panic, paranoia, and a bunch of other things. Now, these things they cause become an open door for them to go from living inside of your physical house, this is good preaching tonight, y'all, to living inside of your spiritual house. So they come in your physical house, and then they try to gain access through fear, through anxiety, through panic, through paranoia. They try to gain access into your spiritual house. And it's time to defend our home from demons. I have four girls. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, a newborn. My sister-in-law lives upstairs. And then my wife. Now, if you came in the middle of the night as a robber to try to break into my house, I don't care how sanctified you think I am. I don't care if I live in California, how holy you think I am. You're going to meet me at the door with a 12-gauge shotgun. That's the bottom line. I'm not going to let a thief or a robber break in my house and violate my family and attack my family or steal from me. But remember, we can't fend off demons with natural weapons. If I'm going to defend myself from natural robbers, natural thieves, natural burglars, the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How much more should we be fending off our houses in the spiritual realm, okay? So if you're not going to let no one break in in the natural realm, listen closely. Why would you let them break in in your physical house? If you're not going to let a robber break in, don't let a demon break in. Now, obviously, you can't shoot a demon with a 12 gauge shotgun. So, I 1 Corinthians 12, 10, sorry, 1st, 2nd Corinthians 10, 3 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but mighty before God to cast down strongholds. So, here Paul is writing to the church in Corinth and saying, Guys, understand, we're fighting with supernatural weapons. So, we're not fighting. I've done many videos on this. We're not fighting with regular shotguns, pistols, sniper rifles. You can't shoot a demon. We're fighting demons with supernatural weapons. Our battle is in the spirit. So how do demons, spiritual demons, spiritual beings, Ephesians 6, get into physical homes? A couple ways. Number one, 
through occult items or idolatry. Remember Deuteronomy 7.25 says, do not bring cursed items into your home. Let the cur let you be cursed like the item. So if you bring in these cursed items, these occult items, these idolatrous items, these Buddha statues, these pictures of Mary, these different things of, that are idols or things from other countries or have witchcraft occult like crystals and magic books and Harry Potter. Come on, somebody. These are occult items that allow demons to come into your house. People oftentimes innocently bring things back from mission trips, not knowing they have demons attached to them. And I believe you need to pray tonight. Holy Spirit, show me anything in my house or my life that has a demon attached to it so that I can get free. I did deliverance on somebody and they literally had a plate that came from Africa from a mission trip. And the demon said, I'm not leaving because my legal right is the plate in their house. Well, we ended up doing deliverance on them. And when they got home, that plate fell off the dresser that they had it on and cracked during the deliverance when we cast that spirit out. So this is a real thing. Demons oftentimes come through occult-like things or idols, idolatry, idols in your house, okay? They can also come, number two, from evil or horrific things done in the house. If somebody was murdered in the house, if someone was cutting themselves, if somebody was doing an evil act or a sinful act habitually, that can be an open door for a demon to dwell in the house. So horrific things happening in houses. I have people that tell me I moved into a house, evil spirits everywhere, and then they find out someone was killed in the house, someone commits suicide in the house. These are all open doors. Evil and horrific things is number two, how demons get into homes. Okay, number three is open portals by things you watch or do. So remember, acts of sin are open doors for demons to come in. Also, what you watch can be an open door for a demonic spirit to come into your house. So if you're watching pornography, if you're watching movies with magic, if you're watching horror movies, I'm telling you guys, Isaiah, you're crazy. I can tell you story after story after story, but I want to keep these videos 10 to 15 minutes of people that have opened the door to demons in their house because of things they did and things they watched. These are open doors, okay? Number four, now this is a very, very common one, is Ouija boards, rituals, and ceremonies. Many people play the Ouija board. How many people do we know? played the Ouija board growing up thinking it was no big deal Hasbro makes it it's no big deal it's an open door in the spirit realm for demons to come in so the Ouija board is an open door for demons to dwell in your house seances ceremonies chants rituals blood sacrifices these are all open doors for demons to come now you say Isaiah I would never ever do any of these things yeah but what about the person that was here before you what about the person that lived there before you moved in or before you rented? So you need to cleanse your house, which I'm going to tell you how to do in this video. Don't click off. I'm going to tell you how to cleanse their house. Now, some people move out of their houses due to this, but I'm telling you, demons cannot move us out. We move demons out. So don't move out of your house. You don't need to leave. I'm going to tell you tonight how you can get them out. Remember, demons don't move us out. We move demons out. Type that below in the comments. I have went in the ho into homes before and commanded the demons to leave. A few times I've gone into homes with demons. I get extremely lightheaded. So that's the way I sense the presence of demons in houses. Now, I remember when I first got saved and the Lord began to tell me that I want to move in your house, move in your living room. If you don't know, we had a big revival in my living room for about a year. Great revival. He said, but there's things of witchcraft in your house. I ended up finding in my brother's room at the bottom of his dirty hamper. The Lord showed me those Harry Potter DVDs that I got rid of. He thought I was crazy. I climbed to that bottom of his hamper, dug through, got rid of. I've shared this story before. My sister had alcohol, though she wasn't a drinker, in her closet. God showed me where it was. She didn't know. Nobody knew. I went in there, took it out. Why, Isaiah? It sounds too crazy. No, the Holy Spirit wants to dwell in our houses. And if we have these idols and this witchcraft, these magic and these things in our house, we're preventing the move of God from breaking out in our houses. So now I want to give you five ways, okay? Five simple ways you can get demons out of your house today. So you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You can get them out today. Number one is destroy anything in your house that gives these demons a right to be there. Acts 19, 19 is your verse. And many of those, the Bible says, who had practiced magical arts, collected their books, and threw them away in a big pile, beginning to burn them in front of everyone. This is the amplified version. They calculated the value of the books to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So let me give you the picture. Acts 19, a revival breaks out. What happens in the revival? Oftentimes what happens in our revivals, people get convicted and they start getting rid of stuff. They went home, got all their witchcraft books, put them in a pile and burned them. And it was several million dollars worth of books. So one of the best things you can do is find these items these idols, these witchcraft books, whatever the items are, the Holy Spirit will show you and go ahead and burn them. Okay, number two, as you walk through your house and you anoint every doorway, this is something you should do if you move into a new house or you have demons in your house now, walk around your house, get some oil, doesn't matter what kind of oil it is, and start anointing the doorways 
commanding, you know, nothing can pass through. Put that anointing on those doorways. Number three is to command every demon to leave and never return. Now, listen very closely. Listen, Linda, listen. Don't just go around whispering in your room. You need to speak out into the spiritual realm. Remember, according to 2 Corinthians 4, there's an unseen realm and a seen realm. First Colossians talks about the unseen realm being more, you know, being created. And 2 Corinthians 4 talks about the unseen realm being more real than the real realm. Go in there and start speaking into the unseen realm. How do we move things in the unseen realm? Jesus says, with your words. You have the power to bind and loose. Your words have the power of life and death. Do you need to go in there and you need to start commanding in every room, every demon to leave. They have no legal right and never return. So number three is command every demon to leave and never return. Number four, dedicate your house to the Lord. I can't say this enough. Dedicate your house to the Lord. Tell the Lord, I dedicated my kids. I dedicated my marriage. I dedicate this house to you, Lord. Let this house be a place of your presence, of your power, of your glory. If you really want to get rid of demons, have some prayer meetings in the house. Let your house be a house of God. Let it be a dwelling place. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Let it be a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. And you're going to see that those demons will no longer want to be there. Okay, number five and last very simple way of getting demons out of your house. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill your home. You say, well, duh, Isaiah, but have you done this? Ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. I know you fill my spiritual house, but now I'm asking you to fill my physical house. So ask the Holy Spirit. Many of you haven't done that. Maybe you have, but there's many of you listening right now that have never asked the Holy Spirit to fill your house. If you haven't done that, this is life changing. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill every room of every bedroom of your home. Okay, now let me give you a prayer. Remember guys, I'll put this prayer down in the description for the sake of time. I'm just going to read it slowly and then you can repeat after me, but I'm going to put in the description so you can pray this prayer. Okay. It's a very powerful prayer. If you want to get demons out of your home. So you're going to say in the name of Jesus, I speak now to the demons in this house. I do not care what gave you the right to be here. This is a dwelling place of God. This is an earthly headquarters for God's kingdom and you have no right to be here. All the people within this house are given to God and dedicated to him. I feel the Holy Ghost on this, guys. I revoke your legal right to be here and I command you demons to go and never return in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive all the sins of my family and my ancestors. As for any spirits associated with them that have been passed down through the bloodline, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Okay? And this is what I want you to pray. We now dedicate this place to the Lord. Holy Spirit, you come in and take control of this place. You rule over this house in Jesus' name. Guys, if you did everything I said in this video, I'm telling you those demons have to leave and never return. I hope this helps you sleep at night. I hope this helps you get some peace of mind when dealing with poltergeists or noisy demons, chaotic demons that try to dwell in your house. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. If you got blessed today, post it in the comments, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what did God speak to you in this video. I'll read through the comments. I'll be responding to the comments as well. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next live stream or the next video. God bless.